welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Gen Con interview. I'm Callie and I'm here with uh, Allie Hi. and Noelle from uh, Games Adults Play. Games Adults Play and they have a ton of games that they're showing off here at the con. Uh, really exciting, big booth, lots of games. So uh, tell me maybe what's the top game you want to talk about first? Sure, yeah. Well, we're here at Gen Con with Games Adults Play. This is actually our debut of our brand new adult party games rated 18 and up. Uh -huh. um, so cool. We'll start with Friend or Foe. This is a really awesome game. It was actually created by four girlfriends. They were out one night drinking some tequila, playing some games. They're like, you know what? This is really fucking funny. Let's make this a game. And so now we have Friend or Foe, a game of rid ridiculously revealing questions. So you're going... Yeah, so we, we reviewed this game, lots of fun, great party game, Little can get a little risque, but very, very fun. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. So like in the first round, the questions might be like, would I rather live in LA or New York City? And then by the time you get to round five, it's like, how many sexual partners have I had in one night? You definitely get to learn a lot about your friends. <laughs> so much, too much, honestly. <laughs> Awesome. So what, what's next on the table here? Next we have True Colors. True Colors is actually a Pressman game from the 80s that was we brought back. The old box was really ugly. The questions were kind of mean, so we made the box pretty. We had some new fun questions. Um, I, I think the new one's great. What's yeah. the funnest question you can think of right now? The funnest question I can think of? <laughs> off the top of my head. <laughs> so They're mad. all just too great. I can't, I can't <laughs> name one. Honestly, no, the game's hysterical. Basically, you like vote on your friends, you answer questions, they vote on you. It's 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 a really great get to know you game. Awesome, I can't wait to play. And you, Allie, what do you have that, over there that you want to show off? So, um, I am going to show off Oregon Trail. So this is a completely different kinds of game than the party games. So this is just going to be a strategy game. And I say that like it's going to be no big deal. <laughs> but in this game, you are playing just like it, you're doing the video game. So you are racing to get to Willamette Valley. But it is not a race, it, so it's kind of a racing game, but it's also, that's not how you're going to win. You are going to win by having the most money. And you get the most money by having the most people in your family still alive at the end of the game. Because all of those people are going to help you build your fortune in Willamette. Like, you need those people. So, you're going to have to try and manage all of their health while dealing with things like winter, being cold, and them freezing, and things like rivers where they're going to drown, and things like disease, and broken wagons, and then you have to still feed these people at the end of every turn. So you have to worry about finding enough food to deal with that. So it is a, um, it is a mess, but the entire time you are building your own trail, so you are able to actually go out and have some actual effects on the game. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Okay, I have, um, oh, and you have another game you want to share. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, this is Shit Happens. This game, ha, 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 shit happens. This game is hysterical. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's never happened. <laughs> it is a game. <laughs> this game is hysterical. Um, essentially, you have a lane of pain, which are these really, really awful situations and you have to rank them. So for example, you might have seeing your father naked, your phone falls in the toilet, and you wet the bed every night. And so then the new card that's drawn from the deck is fall asleep on a beach and get third degree sunburn. So is third degree sunburn worse than seeing your father naked? And that's the And then you gotta rank them, and the first player to get 10 cards wins. Awesome, and then you have some new stuff around this game that's going to be coming yeah, out. Yeah, we have a new expansion pack, Fifty Shades of Shit. Hysterical, love it, can't wait, and it's actually coming out later this fall. Um, so keep your eyes out for that. Awesome. So if someone wanted to, uh, you know, learn more about these games or purchase one or get on the list for, for a future game, where should they go? They should go to gamesadultsplay.com and then hit us up on all social media at Games Adults Play. Awesome. Thanks so much for sharing. I have one more question. Uh, what do you got? What do you feel like you unique? You are uniquely contributing to building the board game community. I think that these games are really unique. I think that these are really great party games. I think they're a really great gateway game. So, like, if you're out, you want to play a game, and your friends aren't really it, big gamers, this is a great way to introduce them. And they're hysterical. Like, they're so funny. Correct. Do you have anything you want to add, Allie? <laughs> 
Noel. Also, um, no, that really hits it. I mean, games are, we play games because we like the social and we like the fun. And these are bringing people to these social events together and they get to have their little bit of competitiveness and they get to learn a little bit more about people that they wouldn't normally do. So we're just building relationships, which is all that you're trying to do with games in the first place. So that's all I got. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for sharing your games and talking with us here on the Unfiltered Gamer interviews. Uh, and as always, we look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hey guys, Michael right here from unfilteredgamer.com and we are currently going to be here with Elad Goldstein and we're going to be showing uh, Golden Egg Games, one of their specific games in general, Steam Pirates, it's going to be coming out to us in September. So I'll go ahead and let you explain a little bit more about that. Yeah, uh, so Steam Pirates is a, a brand new game that we are uh, planning to release maybe on uh, Spiel, uh, not maybe, hopefully uh, the games uh, will come there. It's, um, it's a game where we play as a pirate in a steampunk world. So the world uh, is controlled by those two factions you can see here. So we have the Great British Empire, totally fictional, and uh, the Pirate Syndicate. So those have their own officials that you can try to maybe bribe during the game so they can give you access to special abilities. Basically, you will control your own uh, pirate ship. So all of those uh, ships will be, uh, sorry, frigate, will be, uh, you will see them uh, much nicer <laughs> models than what you can see here. What you're trying to do in the course of the game is to build your trade route. So you're building those uh, trade houses across the map. And also you can travel to another, um, to another island so you can do business with them. This will actually make your uh, coal route, this is coal islands, better. So when you visit more and more and more islands, each of your trade house will make more money. By the end of the game, you will have uh, the most money you will have, you will gain more points. Also, there is a small treasure hunt. So it's an old uh, theme, uh, an old pirate uh, hid his, uh, his old uh, chest. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you have four little treasure islands that you, you can try to travel in. So each time you will travel your ship through those, you will gain a part of the map. So by the end of the game, the one with the most complete map, of course, gain more, par more, more points. Makes sense. Mm. Yeah, sure. And it's also an uh, event-driven game. So there is a mission every round, mission for the, uh, either the pirates or, or the great, uh, or the British uh, Empire. Um, and they're controlling those dreadnoughts. And they will ship across the map and they will affect, they will put embargoes on the on certain island. So if this ship will end up here, my traders cannot operate. If uh, there is a flying fortress, if you will end up on, on the firearms, you cannot trade for firearms this round. So they will change the so makeup. The events are going to change the makeup of the game and how it's going to function, basically. Yeah. And then all at the same time, you want to actually be moving around the board as best as you can to get different things, as well as to acquire the treasure points. Because this basically incorporates the function of making you go around the board more, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And those special characters will change everything. How many players is it? And is it uh, based on like uh, competitive back and forth? It's a competitive game, uh, two to four players. It's about 90 minutes uh, to play. Uh, and it's actually, I didn't tell you how it works. It's, it's really you have only three actions that you can do. Okay. You can either build a new trade house. You can take the die and just move on. You can buy an official. So you can put, either pay, one, uh, pay, pay them up yep. and uh, use the emulator. Or can, you can just use one of their action straight up. The, other, the, the last one is to make uh, a profit action which actually you can send off your uh, goods and then make money based on your uh, progress on your personal board. Awesome. So this is uh, this, this will be a Kickstarter, you said? It? Yeah. OK, and that's in like September-ish? Uh, like uh, the last week of September, possibly. OK, and then you're going to hope to release it during Spiel, at least. That's the, that's yeah. the hope. We are doing uh, those short projects. Maybe this one will be uh, like 10 days. A uh, short project with uh, fast fulfillment. That's, that's what we are aiming for. Awesome.
Well, I want to thank you for taking your time. Uh, I want to mention a couple of things too. First of all, I, we did uh, uh, Dice and Dragons, which was super fun. It's doing really well here at the con. I've noticed oh, people yeah, are picking it up quickly. Yeah. We also got a Dice Tower that came. We haven't yet got to set it up because the day it came was the day we left. And um, I, my last thing is one question. What is it that you want to bring to the gaming community that's different and more unique? Yeah, it's, well, it's it's different between game to game. Like D Dice and Dragon was, I, I designed this game because I wanted to play like a um, um, role-playing game with my son. And kids, I don't know, they have short uh, tension to them. Yeah. yeah. So I, I wanted to design something quick and also I wanted to design something that I can play with him easily. And he actually played as the, the game, the full campaign. And then he played it with his uh, little sister and stuff like that. Oh, so right. it's a uh, yeah. I, so I wanted to do a family type uh, of game with that game. So e each game, it's actually have different goals uh, to accomplish as a designer to help, you know, uh, parents to play with their kids and stuff like that. And we will have, definitely will continue to have uh, more uh, family type games. And it introduces a little bit of like a campaign RPG style yes. to a game that's actually very family oriented. Yes. I and mean, that's one thing I was saying is like, Callie, when she first thought she was like intimidated by it and she wasn't sure if she was going to like it because D&D &D and that kind of stuff is not really her thing. But once she started playing and rolling the dice and moving and passing around and, in, and noticed the like family nature of the game yeah. and for kids, she really got into it. She's like, I really like this game now. Oh. That, those are the guys that made that game. That's really cool. So I was really excited to see that she was getting into a game like that when I didn't actually know if she was going to enjoy it or not. Yeah. So I see that you're, uh, you have it's, each it's, and every game, you have kind of like this own you know, unique thing you're going for. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's kind of an addictive. <laughs> he, play, he killed one dragon, yep. and then he, the next day I want to kill two. Yep. And, then, and then how it's rolled out, and then he tells his friends, and they will also want to kill a dragon, so that's cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out of here at Gen Con to oh, yeah, uh, sure. show us the game as well as talk about a little bit of your other games. Is there anything else secretly coming in the pipes we can get a, get, a, get an idea of? Um, we, I don't know if, um, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. A Edge of Humanity, uh, right. the game that also uh, I think you reviewed. That was the first one I reviewed, yeah. Yes. So we are in November, we're doing a Kickstarter for it. So it's a big announcement uh, for season one, which will have two expansion. And uh, hopefully those two expansions will cost about $15 both for both of them. And it will introduce, of course, a new scenario packs. But those scenario packs will be completely different than anything that you played so far. So it's, it is wow. a new okay. game mechanic. That was fun. I like the way it's, 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 it's a deck builder, but then it's not at the same time because you're taking cards out and moving it around. It feels, it feels really interesting. My, my, my cameraman, who normally would be with me, is super in love with Edge of Humanity. He oh. loves that feel. He's like, it's a kind of hand management deck builder in a way. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. it feels like that. We, we called it, uh, I don't know, uh, Penny, my co-designer, I, I forgot his name, but it's like deck deconstruction. Yeah, exactly. That would be exactly what you call it. Anyway, yeah. I don't want to take up too much more your time. There's a lot of people here at your booth that want to check out the rest yeah. of the game. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you very and I appreciate much. it. And always, guys, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hey guys, I'm Michael Wright from unfilteredgamer.com and here we're here at Gen Con 2018. We're here with Jason from Face Shift Games and uh, Geek Fever Games as well. And we're gonna be talking about a couple of his games coming up very shortly as well as one coming a little ways longer down the track maybe. But all, all intertwined. Right. So <laughs> let's go ahead and get into it. Good, good, so nice to meet you. Thank you guys. Uh, so uh, yeah, we have, um, we have a, a, a suite of games. They're in a universe that we call Age of Heroes. And the big game is called Queen's Quest. And this is a dungeon romp, old, old school, 8-bit uh, style. It's gonna actually resemble all the old like roguelike games. In fact, the original prototype was made with ASCII artwork, like the old DOS games from the 80s. Uh, and so that's coming out in the spring. We're gonna have a big Kickstarter for that. But earlier than that, in the fall this year, we're gonna run two, a Kickstarter for two mini games that are all in the same universe. So they're gonna use a lot of the same character art. They're gonna be all that same kind of retro style. It's gonna feel like style. the games from Nintendo, basically, is exactly. the idea. In fact, I have some of the race cards here, so you can kind of take a look at the uh, the type of artwork that we have and the interface. It makes it look like an old like Final Fantasy or you know Zelda, like those types of original games from the NES. Uh, so really exciting. Uh, got a bunch of great artwork coming out. And um, that is going to be Queen's Quest, and then the two mini games are Dungeon Drop and Queen's Gauntlet. So both of them are going to kind of set the stage, set the story, and kind of introduce the whole world of Age and of those Heroes. Are the two mini games are going to be roughly set to Kickstarter. What time? Uh, about fall. Uh, about fall. 
about fall. Okay, and we'll have more information <laughs> too. It's likely I'll review it, and if not, I'll post about it so you guys get a chance to check out the games, as well as, of course, the later game coming out a little yes. longer. Yes, exactly. So, uh, my last question for you is really important to me, is what do you plan on presenting to the community that other people have not, or something that you like to uniquely incorporate yourself with? For gaming. With regards to the game or yeah, in general? In general. Okay. And so, involving gaming, of course. So but. phase shift games, the, what we're really trying to do is put games out there that push some kind of a dimensional envelope. So what I mean by this is there is all this three-dimensional space above the table, yet most games are kind of flat, right? You got boards, you got flat cards, maybe a couple pieces, you know, get up a little bit. Uh, we want games that push that envelope. Really, like, three-dimensional games is going to be something we care a lot about. But then, push the boundaries of time, push the boundaries of space. Uh, maybe there's a game that can be played in multiple rooms simultaneously. Maybe two teams are building a mech and that's one game cooperative amongst themselves. And then they come together and duke it out with their mechs in a, in a third game that kind of brings it together. It reminds me of a game. There's one game I've seen just like that. Is there? <laughs> it, no, it's, it's not the same, okay? This is like a, a, a trader-based game in which okay. you're going to be having people go and start, start off together and they go off in different rooms yeah, and fight each other. and do their own plotting and And whatever. they come back, yeah. I like that. It sounds I love somewhat those like types that. Of things. That's <laughs> beautiful. I love that idea, and I think that's a great way of going about it, especially adding the retro fit to all of these games Amen. as well. It feels like these things feel like a Zelda style game right here. Yeah. Like you're literally walking through the different courtyards that's and corners. That's the dark forest. Here's the ice caves. We got catacombs, inferno, you know, all sorts of different. These are just you know some pr early prototype examples, but the 8-bit old school style artwork. No, is super I, I dig it. I dig love it. it. It's something that's really special to well, us. I think that's really important to have. But anyway, I. <laughs> really appreciate you guys taking the time to uh, stop by and show us a couple of your games Thank and I hope you. to be able to show them off to other people as well when time comes and uh, but one more time Kickstarter roughly around for Fall both of them 2018 and then spring will be the big one the Queen's Quest one but here's the thing go to phaseshiftgames.com if you can that was my next sign question. up for our newsletter because here's the thing we're gonna give you free promos if you sign up for our newsletter before the spring uh, Kickstarter for the big game you're going to be eligible. We're going to give you free promos uh, if you back the campaign as well. So just sign up for the newsletter, and you're going to be eligible to get three uh, promo cards that no one else is going to get. We're not going to print them again after that point. So up until the date of our Kickstarter, uh, if you're on that list, we're going to give you free stuff. So awesome. do that. That's the best thing you can do for us. Faceshiftgames.com. Awesome. Thank you, Jason. I really do appreciate it. Faceshift Games and, of course, Geek Fever that's attached with it. The design firm. Yep. Thank you. All right. See you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>
Uh, one is that um, because you're working through these robots, the quarterback problem that you often see in co-ops isn't there because on your turn you can just take so the no action. So no alpha gamer basically in this it, one. It really does eliminate it because you can take all the actions on your turn, you just, there won't be anything left for anything anybody else to do, so. That's interesting because a lot of my friends who are gamers, when they play cooperative games, usually they don't like to because there's always that one gamer. They go, I don't even like cooperative games because I don't get to do anything half the time. Yeah. Or if it's like somebody who's very well versed in it, they don't get to play because it's just like, well, it's not very fun for me because I don't actually get to participate as much as I'd like to. What's cool in Lucid City is there's oh, you can take as many actions as you want, but the, the cards, the resources that you have to take the actions are the clock of the game. So the more actions you take, if you're doing it inefficiently, you just can't, you don't have the time to do what you need to do. And another thing that's unique about the game is um, we have these difficulty cards, uh, which are also in the same groovy art, um, and they give a challenge, there's 36 of them. So theoretically, there are 36 difficulty settings in the game, and you could take on as many of these challenges as you want. You couldn't win if you had more than a few of them, they're really hard. But um, they add to your score at the end. You can score the they game. They get a little to more difficult, which increases how well you do with the game when you add more difficulty That's to right. it. The harder That's the awesome. challenge, the more points, you, virtual points you get. At the it end. looks good. It feels good. I like the different aspects of the uh, little, like, what do you want to call them? I guess the the laser cut miniatures. Mean, yeah. Can you change the way they look based on like moving the parts from different pieces? Yeah. There's, so there's a basic uh, body, and then the legs are going to be all different, and all the accoutrements. So. Uh, you can fiddle around with the different bits, and then in an expansion, we'll have tiny variable player powers for the robots. Uh, that'll be how you build which kind arms of? you put on, a little like Warhammer-esque, you know, where you can customize it's your bot. It's just enough for a game that's basically going to be virtually a cooperative game where you're going to be moving around the Exactly pieces. right. And it's not, it's not too fiddly, it's just a couple little adjustments you make in the beginning. And again, it adds to the fun of it and the replayability. Okay, so when is it going to be on Kickstarter? And also, uh, where can they go to find out more about the game, websites, that kind of stuff? Yeah, absolutely. So now the best place to go is onto our Facebook page, which is Erasmus, E-R-A-S-M-U-S, -S, Fox, like the animal. Um, and you can see some great, uh, more of uh, Phil Cohen, our illustrator's amazing art. Um, and, uh, oh, you're not allowed to peek to the good side. Oh, don't show anyone that side. They have to earn the good side. It starts off evil. They have to earn the good side. Um, and so Erasmus Fox on Facebook is the best, is the best way now. Plays in about an hour, uh, super fun. And we'll also be at Essen, so if you're at Essen, uh, you can come by our booth and, and fully demo it. Awesome, one final question, and I'll try to make it a doozy here. Yeah. Um, what one thing do you want to bring to the board game community that is not generally something anybody else has done, something unique just specifically to you or maybe your games? Well, I'm a clinical psychologist in my day job, and I really do believe board games can save the world. I believe that the, the mental, the social, the interaction, there's so much that board, board games are now particularly for our amusement, uh, and they're being used in schools and businesses, and I real, my mission in, in gaming, besides creating fun, compelling, beautiful games, uh, is to really teach uh, muggles that games have this incredible pro-social value and uh, that they can save the world. I mean, I would agree, considering I also have a degree in psychology, a little yeah. lesser, but still a degree, uh, and uh, no I, less, I feel no like... No, it's just different. I, I feel like these games do present a certain psychology as far as getting to know people, it opens people up. There's a whole bunch of stuff that involves with the human beings as far as like playing a game together, and you learn so much, it's amazing. And we use games, uh, so we do a little bit of a thing called Cardboard Clubhouse, which is an after-school kids program. And we use games to help teach kids social like interaction. gamifying, right? That's, no, it's the opposite. So oh. gamifying is when you take like your sales technique and you make it into a game, like so that your interviewing would be a game. Like you, for every good interview you do, your wife gives you plus one points. Ooh, that's what do I do at the end? That's get, you get to spend them. <laughs> uh, that's gamifying. So I think that what I'm talking about is lifeifying. I'm talking about playing a game for its own sake and then teaching life lessons about that game. How to be good competitors, how to be good cooperators, how to be aggressive competitors without being obnoxious. These are lessons that we don't teach kids any other way. Our only model for competition right now is sport, which is fantastic, but it's not the only way to interact. And so board games- Especially we got guys like me, got a bad back and a bad butt, and they don't want to do it. I'm just old, so that, uh, that's, that takes me out. And, and also the theme of these games presents a unique twist as well as far as learning, right? Understanding like how it once was a utopia, and now it's become this crazy dystopian, like crazy you know, world that you want to actually kind of like- Well, your games express your values and your morals, right? They just do, whether you mean to or not. What you value is what you put time in, and the message that you give 
is connected to your values and your morals. It's the things you find important. And if you come at that from the right direction, it's appealing and it transmits a message that that's what every game does. I agree. All right, Barry, well, thank you very much hey, for taking the pleasure. time to yeah, show us fun. your game. And also, don't forget to check out the game. I'll have a link in the description below as far as where you're going to be able to see all this stuff. And like I said, one more time, the website. Yeah, uh, it's uh, right now, erasmusfox.com, or you can find us. Uh, either best way to interact with us is on the, our Facebook page, Erasmus Fox. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time.